So today I've got um, Villa Wolf Pinot Noir. A uh, very simple label. Often German labels are um, uh, people people get, get get slightly disturbed at how how cluttered some of them uh, are, or historically how how some of them have been. Uh, maybe you'll have seen through through the posts that I've, I've been uh, doing this week that that's uh, increasingly less the case. So nice, simple, clean lines, and um, it just says Pinot Noir 2015 Villa Wolf. All the stuff that you uh, uh, the bureaucrats want is on the back label. All the detail there that anyone could possibly want, and possibly more than they could possibly want. Is that enough possibly's in there? Anyway, weighing in at uh, 13% alcohol uh, from the Falz. Let's give it a whirl. Now, Germany's been making Pinot Noir for a long, long time. Uh, some of them, you'll see, will be labelled uh, with the German name Spätburgunder, Late Harvest Burgunder, or Late, late Burgundy, um, because there is also Weissburgunder, uh, Pinot Blanc, and Grau Burgunder. Uh, Pinot Gris, um, so this is Spätburgunder, but they, I think for the um, uh, export markets, uh, they're, they're labelling this one as Pinot Noir. And uh, uh, the, the, when, I, when German Pinot Noir started trying to make an impression uh, on the international stage, probably about, oh, I don't know, 25 years ago, um, the early attempts were uh, a little bit correct and uh, uh, not as pleasure uh, orientated as, as, uh, as uh, people would, would have liked them to be. Since then, I think there's a, a few things happened. The growers have grown up, the vines have grown up, and uh, uh, between the two of them, more mature vines, uh, more mature winemaking, you're, you're seeing uh, this, uh, sl this slow appearance of uh, Pinot Noir always needs the allure. Uh, so I stick my nose in here, and it's this uh, quite lush, ever so slightly comfy strawberry character. Uh, it's not uh, amazingly deep in colour, you can't see against a black t-shirt, I don't know whether you can see against a vaguely white wall, uh, maybe that got cut off, I don't know, um, I don't know what, my, uh, what my framing is like today, but, uh, but it, smells, uh, it smells like I want to have a drink. Uh, rather than just, I'm going to go, OK, let's, uh, this is something I just want to sit and make some notes on and uh, then move on to the next wine. Anyway, so I am going to have a drink. Soft, juicy, warm. I don't know whether there is a little hint of oak on there. There's certainly something that's giving a slightly smoky character to the wine. Could be from the vineyard. Um, it could be from a barrel. But um, what, they, what you are left with is uh, warmth and pleasure. Not the most complex of Pinot Noirs, but um, it's not. Uh, it's a very friendly price. Friendly wine, friendly price, and um, I'm, um, I'm. I'm going to. I'm just about to plonk some steaks on a, a griddle, and I'm. I'd be interested to find out whether this is uh, a little bit too light, or um, maybe it's got the muscle to, uh, to, 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 to cope with the with the charring and uh, and the the beefy flavours. Uh, what one thing I do know is that uh, that flavour is hanging around in my mouth, so I'm left with uh, a little bit of um, that smokiness, a little bit of tannin, and um, this juicy voluptuous fruit. So. Um, Whatever happens, I think I'm going to enjoy it. The meat's going to be good, the wine's pretty good, and uh, the combo, I'll report back. See you soon.